What if I told you that we can make a video like this look good even if we take away this, 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 and leaving just this one light? Hey guys, my name is Justin, and if you're new here, welcome to the channel. I make videos about photography, filmmaking, travel, and gear. So if you're into those kinds of things, then please do consider subscribing as it's the easiest way to support this channel. The other day, we light the company under Viltrox sent me one of their newest lights, the Viltrox Ninja 200. Now, I've been using a lot of Relight lights since the start of 2022. So when they reached out and asked me if I was going to be interested to try this one out, it was pretty easy to say yes. I was genuinely curious to find out how well the Ninja series performed. So today for this video, I thought it was going to be a fun experiment to do seven light setups using just the one light, the We Light Ninja 200 to see how well we could light YouTube videos just like this. This first lighting setup that we're doing is called flat lighting and it's done by simply setting the light directly in front of you and behind the camera. It's very similar to how people use ring lights where the phone or their cameras is right in the middle. For this setup, we're using the Wii Light Ninja 200 paired with a big soft box so we're able to produce this nice soft lighting. Flat lighting is a kind of lighting setup that produces the least amount of contrast. And by looking at this image right now, you're seeing that there's very little shadow if at all on my face. Now, this is not a normal lighting setup I do for my channel, but since we're using this with a big softbox, it's rendering a really nice looking image. I can definitely see the potential of using this for certain types of shots. The next lighting technique is called Rembrandt lighting, and it's a lighting technique popularized by my uncle Rembrandt. This is a standard lighting technique used for photography and cinematography. It's so popular, in fact, that a lot of the creators here on YouTube that you see doing lighting setups use this style. This is my favorite setup because it's a little bit more of a moody image and you do this by moving the light towards the side about 45 degrees and raising the light a little bit higher so that you get that triangle on your face since you have the light on one side the other side of your face is going to be darker and you counteract that by using another light but in this case since we're doing this one light challenge you can also go with a five in one reflector which i would normally do but since i have a white wall on this side the light that's coming from this side is already bouncing off off of the white wall so it's already kind of lifting the shadows on this end if your wall isn't white then definitely i would suggest getting a five in one reflector using the white side this next lighting setup is kind of the reverse of rembrandt lighting so right now the we light ninja 200 is off to the side towards my back here acting as a rim light and i'm using a five in one reflector on the other end to bounce the light off of that to light this side of my face now the five in one reflector is literally just outside of the frame and I've set it up as close as I can so that I get as much light as I can from the rim light. The next lighting technique is called butterfly lighting. You do this by setting the light directly in front of you and raising it a little bit higher and pointing it down towards you so that it casts this shadow under your nose that kind of looks like a butterfly. Now you use this technique in conjunction with five in one reflector, which I have right here, just under the shot and what that does is it creates this very glamorous looking photo. This is a very popular lighting technique used by a lot of fashion photographers because like I said, it creates a very glamorous look. Incidentally, this is also called Paramount Lighting because it was popularized by this very famous Hollywood studios you might have heard of called Paramount Studios. This next setup is called Book Lighting and it's one of my favorite setups to do. It produces very nice, soft, and natural looking light. This setup is one that you won't need the soft box for, so if you don't have it, it's gonna work. But you will require a five-in-one reflector, particularly the diffuser side of it. And you can see in this setup, I have it right here. And the idea is to use the direct harsh light of your light source, in this case, the Light Ninja 200, and bounce it off a white surface or reflective surface. What I'm doing is I'm actually directing the light towards the white walls of the room. And the light that bounces off of that is getting diffused by the five in one reflector, which is literally just outside of the frame here. And what you get is this nice looking diffused lighting. Now this is what it looks like without the five in one diffuser and just the light bouncing off of the white wall. And this is what it looks like with the diffuser on.
I'd say the We Light Ninja 200 is powerful enough to do a book lighting setup. With book lighting, you don't really need a five in one diffuser if you don't have it. You can use bed sheets, shower curtains, and you're gonna be fine. Essentially, the idea is to take the bounce light and diffuse it with some sort of material. Technically speaking, anytime you bounce a light off of a surface and diffuse it with a diffusion material like this, you can call it a book light. You see this V shape being formed that kinda looks like a book, hence, the name book lighting. Now this next setup is called ceiling bounce. And this is a technique that's gonna be very useful for people who don't have a lot of space to work with, or maybe you don't have a soft box just yet. And it's essentially done by setting the light in front of you and putting and pointing it towards the ceiling so that it bounces off of the ceiling and it casts the light down everywhere else. One thing you need to take note of when using this technique is that you might need to raise the ISO of your camera. So right now, my camera is still set at f2, 1 over 50 out of a second. I have raised the ISO to about ISO 400 because we are losing a lot of the power of the light. Now, the Wii Light Ninja 200, I've set it at 100 because again, I'm, I am expecting a lot of power loss, a lot of brightness loss. So we have to set it as powerful as we can in order to get a bright, brightly lit image, a properly exposed image. Another thing you need to look out for when using this technique is that the colors of your walls will also affect the way your image looks. So if you have a red wall, for example, and you're bouncing light off of that, then your image is going to look a little bit reddish. So that's something to take note of. So I think even with this technique, the We Light Ninja 200 holds up really well at 100%. Now this next lighting setup is one that I've always wanted to try but have never been able to do so in the past because it was just simply physically impossible to do with the light that I'm using which is the Godox SL60W. This setup of course is none other than overhead lighting. As you can see, I'm able to mount the V-Light Ninja 200 no problems with my ordinary light stand. It's not even a C stand and I'm not afraid of it falling down. I think it's very, it's pretty much stable at this point. So I'm very happy about that. One of the biggest reasons I've always wanted to try this setup is, of course, for my product review and unboxing video. There aren't going to be any long shadow casting which distracts your viewers. The image is going to look nice and clean. You're going to be able to showcase a product very, very well. So those are seven basic lighting setups you can do for your YouTube videos using just one light. In this case, the We Light Ninja 200. Hopefully, by watching this video, I've shown you a few different ways that you can light your videos regardless if you have just a softbox or a diffuser or even just a bed sheet. So who do I think this light is gonna be perfect for? Well, number one, if you are looking for a budget-friendly option with a little bit more functionality, then this is gonna be right up your alley. If you're someone who doesn't wanna spend too much on lights like the Aperture 120D Mark II, which is, yes, a more professional light, a more established, more popular light because it's used by a lot of creators, but that light costs so much, right? So the We Light Ninja 200 right now at the time of making this video at the Viltrox store. You can get it for I think around $190. So it's under $200. There are different packages that you can check out. Make sure you at least get the one with the Bowens mount because that will open up a whole lot of possibilities for the We Light Ninja 200. It's just, it's just going to make your life a lot easier using the light. Next, if you're looking for something small, compact, and portable, something that's easily moved around or fixed to a position, or something that you can bring along with you to maybe one of your shoots or what have you, then I think the We Light Ninja 200 is going to be perfect for that. It's as small, as compact as they come. Honestly, when I got this out of the bag and held it for the first time, I was so surprised how small it was. I couldn't believe it, especially since I've been so used to my Godox SL60W. Now, side by side, I couldn't help but feel like how much the Godox SL60W feels like a, a dynamic or beside it. The We Light Ninja 200 feels so modern and just so new. The design is beautiful. The build is nice as well. It definitely doesn't feel cheap. Now, of course, this isn't a perfect light. And the number one complaint that people have with this is the fan noise. Now, when I was using the light, I did notice that it was a little bit louder than the Godox SL60W. I did a super scientific test for you guys.
So yeah, it is more noticeable than the SL60W, but I don't think it's really a point of concern. If you're interested in checking out the Wii Lite Ninja 200, then you can do so through the link down in the description box below. And if you go through that link, you can use my code JUSTIN10 to get an additional 10% off of your purchase from the Viltrox store. This is of course an affiliate link which means I will make a little bit of money on the side if you do decide to purchase it through that link to no additional cost to you whatsoever. It will however help me continue making videos just like this for you guys. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you learned something new. Let me know which lighting setup you like the most. And if you do decide to try one of them, comment it down below too. Also, if you're interested in seeing kind of a head-to-head -head comparison between the Wii Light Ninja 200 and the Godox SL60W because both of these lights are 60 watt lights, then let me know in the comment section too. Again, my name is Justin and if you like this video, please don't forget to hit that like button. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. And as always, I want to thank you for watching.